Hi guys, in this video I'm going to show you how to do a one-way ANOVA or a one-factor ANOVA using Excel more like a calculator than anything else. Of course, I've made other videos on how to do this with the analysis tool pack, which is this guy for those of you who are familiar with it. Uh, which is a much quicker way to do it. So I have a video on that, so if you're just looking to do it quick, then check out the video I have on ANOVA on my channel, and you'll find this one, okay? This one is to do it more of the manual way. Some of your courses may require you to do this. So first, let me set up the situation here. First of off, we have one factor, hence a one-way ANOVA, and we have four levels in this factor, represented by these generic names, group one to group four. And notice we have an equal number of observations in each group. Now the first thing I want to do here is to calculate the X bars for each of this group, these groups. So equals average will do this. <coughs> and we'll just drag that to the right. Those are our individual X bars. And then I want to calculate our individual sample variances. So I use equals var.s for that. And here are our, our sample variances. Next, I use this symbol n dot to indicate the number of observations <coughs> in one <clears throat> particular group. And since we're doing a very simple example, we have the same number of observations in each group. So this number is going to be the same across all groups. And just to use Excel functionality, we use equals count, <clears throat> highlight all the observations in any of the groups, and you'll get 8. Now, n is the number of observations in the entire experiment. So, we could use the same method to count all these observations. And C I use for the number of groups or levels in uh, of our factor. So this, just to use functions, count A will count words, okay, text. So we have four groups. Now we're ready to calculate S squared pooled and or the pooled variance and the S squared X bar. Okay, so the way you do this is really simple. S squared pooled is just the average of the S squareds or the individual variances. And S squared X bar is the variance of the X bars <clears throat> as the symbol kind of uh, hints. So equals var dot s and you highlight the X bars. Okay, so now we have everything we need to calculate our F statistic. And our F statistic, when all groups have the have an equal number of observations, is n dot times s squared x bar divided by s squared pooled. And make sure you put your numerator anytime you're doing any multiplication or any kind of arithmetic in the numerator. Put it in parentheses or else you'll get the wrong answer. That's our F statistic, okay? Now I didn't give you an alpha for this test. Let's say our alpha for this test is 0.05. Remember that our null hypothesis here is HO, or the null hypothesis is that mu1, the average <coughs> of group 1, is equal to the average of group 2, is equal to the or to use a more technical word, the mean of group three. And since we have four groups, is equal to the mean of group four. And the alternative hypothesis is at least one inequality. That's uh, acronym for at least one inequality. And I say alpha is equal to zero point zero five okay so we do all this work here and we're almost at the point where we could decide do we accept HO or do we reject HO okay <clears throat> so the way we could do that is twofold first off we can do the p-value method okay to do the p-value method 
remember it's the rule is if our p value is less than alpha then we reject ho okay so let's see what our p value is here we can use this function in excel f dot dist dot rt and we have to feed Excel our F statistic, comma, our degrees of freedom numerator, which is C minus 1, and our degrees of freedom denominator, which is N minus C, which is 28. And that is our p-value. So let me just uh, t remind you the degrees of freedom. Degrees of freedom for an F distribution, there's two. There's the numerator degrees of freedom, and there's the denominator degrees of freedom. Okay, this one's equal to C minus 1, and this one's equal to N minus C. That's where I got the 3 and 28 from. Okay, so our p value is clearly greater than alpha. So we, what do we do? We accept HO, right? So if this is less than this, then we reject. HO. But if it's not, we accept HO. I'm just doing this in a fancy way. You don't have to do this this way. This is more Excel practice. So this if function tests if this is greater than this. If it is, it accepts HO. If it wasn't, it would reject HO. I could show you. Right? And finally, we could do it the same thing with the using an F cutoff so we can get the F critical value and compare that to our F statistic the function to do that is equals F dot inv dot RT and you feed the alpha for the first argument then the degrees of freedom of the numerator which was 3 we did before C minus 1 and the degrees of freedom denominator which is 28 and that's all it needs to get you the F critical. And we see that the F critical value, remember the F distribution looks like this. Right? This is the F distribution. It's a uh, right skewed or positively skewed distribution. And the F critical is the number such that cuts off the acceptance region from the rejection region. Rejection region, double R, acceptance region okay that is 2.95 if you round what we just got here okay if you this is the number that you look up in your uh, statistical tables in the back of your textbooks okay so you might find 2.95 okay then you see where your F statistic which you computed from the data here right lies obviously it lies to the left 1.55 is somewhere here, definitely less than 2.95, so it's in the acceptance region. So we would accept, again, using the same logic as this picture is showing, we would accept HO. And you get the same exact results, no matter which way you do it, p-value way method or criti uh, using the F cutoff, f-critical cutoff method. Okay, so obviously in this case there is no case, uh, no reason to go further with any analysis. We didn't reject HO, we accepted it. We we're saying that all these groups are not significantly different. Their means are not significantly different for this factor. So there's no reason to go on and do any Tukey Kramer in this case analysis or other methods. Okay, but if you did reject HO, then there would be a case to do further analysis and compare each of these groups to each other pairwise and see which groups are causing that rejection but I'll do that in a further video for now I hope this was helpful and make sure you subscribe to my channel check out my other tutorial videos until next time have a great day